Welcome back to my F1 Manager 24 Create a Team Career Mode. Today is a historic day for Arava Archer GP because for the first time we start one of these videos on F1 Manager 24 following the events of last time out as official Formula One race winners. Come on, come on. Antonelli secured us our First race win. We get up to second place in the Constructors Championship. We are a decent chunk ahead of Mercedes. But look at that. 45 points gained. You love to see it. RB floundering now. Floundering in P5. What a great time it was for us at Montreal. Of course, it was the Canadian Grand Prix. Of course, where we got our first victory. There's just something about Montreal and me when it comes to Formula 1, the F1 game especially. It was a wacky race, to be fair, with, you know, that heavy rain in the middle, intermediate periods as well. You know, it saw Magnussen score a P6 of the Williams, you know. I didn't even really notice that. Sonoda and the Alpine scored in seventh place. Uh, that's pretty big. And Audi! Audi scored the their first point p10 for hulkenberg so overall it was a really fantastic very chaotic uh canadian grand prix amazing stuff and you may be wondering after this amazing milestone maybe our maybe it's maybe it's time maybe it's time to upgrade a certain facility in the team hq maybe it's time for people to upgrade their lives that uh, they've been living for the past two and a bit seasons in this series. And in the comments below of not even this, just this series, literally all my comments of every video, basically, it might be time to build Helipad Upgrade 3. Of course, of course. Yeah, we have to do it. We bring in so many new sponsors, VIPs that need to be chaperoned with a helicopter and a helipad at our facilities. Of course, we're going to to upgrade that after a race win in Formula One. Of course, of course. <laughs> I can see the comments now. I can just... <laughs> look, guys, look, look, look. I didn't plan on this being a running joke, but it has become one. And to that effect, I, for one, think that we shouldn't be getting you guys a boardroom until we win the World Championship. Come on now, come on. It only seems fair that that is the cost of this road to glory. It's a very long road and you guys are committed with me to be on this journey. You know, this F1 Manager series honestly has taken me by storm with how many of you are still so engaged. You know, the comments always flood in, the jokes are always there and also the reactions to certain things like our, our you know, storyline and, you know, battling with RB and, you know, and Ocon going to win and then yet yeah, last episode was a really special moment and I'm glad you guys enjoyed seeing me being that happy about getting a race win so no i think we wait we wait the boardroom will not be made until we have a world constructors championship trophy to place in the middle slap bang in the middle of the boardroom table that's what i'm picturing okay and we're not gonna cut shortcuts to that effect we move on in this episode to the dutch grand prix and having got our race win under our belt i know i now no longer feel bad if we were to get a win to get podiums with simulating races especially now that we also i know from a previous episode as well because bearman and antonelli neither of them have face scans properly i'm never going to see a podium cutscene with them in third second or first unfortunately that's a little bit of a of a sadness for me uh you know maybe you know if, if in the future we were to get a different driver that has a face scan that would be a possibility but that doubly means i'm not really that upset if we go and simulate a couple of races and don't get you know to to, to see it in in live action basically you know we've got that first win over the line so we are going to go into the dutch grand prix because that's always been quite a fun one for us here on f1 manager but then i think we're actually going to go ahead and simulate three races so we're going to go to the dutch grand prix simulate that simulate austria we're going to manage the british grand prix obviously we have to manage our home race with a car that now is capable of maybe winning races we have to give ourselves a chance of winning our home race and then we will simulate budapest the hungarian grand prix and honestly yeah it is a car that maybe should be now winning races because this is the R&D chart. We are actually, technically on paper, the number one car in Formula One. You can see, <laughs> quite comically, the, the travesty that has been 
Visa Cash App, RB. What what happened? Did, did, did their Visa card get stolen? Were they done for fraud? I don't know. Did someone steal their Cash App account? I'm not too sure, but they had a mare, and they're still recovering from their horrendous upgrades. That actually made their car slower overall when you compare it to other parts and other cars and other teams. There is a close chasing pack behind ourselves mclaren and ferrari you know mercedes and aston very close together but yeah apparently we are number one but maybe this might say differently because it still says we're 15th on the high speed so it actually shows once we get the high speed going we actually could be a long way ahead of McLaren, but the thing is, their drivers are so good, you know, 91 rated Piastri, I think 90 rated Alonso, you know, our drivers are getting there, but they're not quite at the calibre yet where they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the McLarens in normal conditions. We won Canada, it was wet though, that really helped us, so let's see how this episode goes, but, you know, the, the vibes, the vibes are, well, as you can see, mostly enthusiastic, though that's what the vibes are. And before we get into the racing, though, I think I'm going to go ahead and put a research part in, because I think it's time to start putting some resources into next year's car, which sounds odd, but... Look at the gap we've got from ourselves to McLaren. Realistically, this season is not when the Constructors' Championship fight is happening. Unless something mad happens to McLaren or unless we can start dominating, getting one-twos every race, it's just not going to happen. So I feel like we should start putting in some bits for next year's car. We don't have any, any ATR period right now. I think our next ATR period is some way away, but... Let's look into doing at least one research on something. Maybe like something like suspension to start us off with, you know. Then we'll put in some ATR period stuff into other upgrades. One million to research that. That's really not bad at all. To be fair, maybe we can do something else as well, to be fair. Let's go for a rear wing. We'll, go, we'll put a new rear wing in. Sponsor plan target missed. How do we miss our sponsor target? I, I actually overdid the plan last time out. What? That... Okay, I feel like that was a little bit bugged. I'm not going to lie. I, 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 we definitely overfilled this last time. Just for complete avoidance of doubt, check this sponsor plan out. We're over engagement. So if this tells us we're under it again next time, I'm going to be questioning that quite a fair bit. Oh, lovely. The new tour center's in. I forgot we, we even started, we started building that before we even got the race win, didn't we? It's like we knew. It's like we knew there'd be more people wanting to come and visit the factory to visit our headquarters quarters and see how on earth this little team operating with a boardroom that is a shed how are they winning a race they're gonna want to come see the spectacle we're gonna be the eighth wonder of the world and the new atr period begins okay decent i actually didn't know it was that close i thought it was a lot further away so actually let's put a research part in with atr period now and let's go for underfloor because i think underfloor makes a big difference as does chassis but we'll start off here with the underfloor let's do a big big wallop about half our of our um allocation here i keep forgetting also to be fair we have a little bit less uh, time than we did uh, in previous seasons there we go one million that's not even that expensive to be honest that's really not that bad i'll leave one slot open just in case we want to make an actual new tangible part for um for, for this year's car because we do have uh, you know maybe uh you know we, uh, even though maybe the championship is impossible and we're just trying to solidify this position this won't be easy to solidify you know mercedes and ferrari don't make any mistake they're a, they're still probably better than us really so they're going to come chasing after us right high targets boys let's go out there off the back of a win, I'm, I'm hoping, I, I, I'm not expecting us to continue the win, a win streak, but I'm expecting at least one of them to get on the podium here at Zanvor. Oh, that's a good quality. Second and third, it was in the wet. So maybe that's why it was so good, you know, maybe seemingly our car is actually really good in wet conditions this season compared to previous ones. Um... That, that's a solid quality. That's a solid quality. I assume maybe. What's the, what were the full results then? Uh, Piastri on pole position. Hamilton P4. Alonso, that's not a quality he needed. He needs to be right up there to continue his pressure on Piastri. Lando Norris and Williams continue to be doing bits, really. They're really punching above their weight, it would seem. And RB, oh, we love to see it. The downfall of RB this season. 
We love to see it. We really do. And the climb of Audi is looking promising. Hulkenberg up there. That's that's good. They're chipping away, you know. They're chipping away. Right, let's see how this race goes then for them. Dutch uh, GP, usually quite a fun one, actually, on this game. And uh, is, it has been a good one for us in terms of performance-wise as well. So, hoping for a good one. Oh, podium finish. We'll take it. We'll take it. We'll take it. Solid, solid stuff. Podium Fantinelli, but no Behrman. No Behrman. What happened? Oh, Behrman. 11th place. What happened, man? One lap down. So, a little bit of a hectic one, maybe, in the race. That's a bit frustrating. Antonelli, though, going from strength to strength. Honestly, Kimi, he's the younger of the two. He's the new one of the two. And Behrman, he's been our, he's been our Leclerc that, what, of what Leclerc is to Ferrari. He's been our golden boy because he's been the driver we've had since the start of the series. But Kimi has come in and he is really outshining him at the moment um, in terms of the championship. For the first time, Antonelli is above Behrman now in the championship up till now. Behrman, even with Antonelli getting the win last time out, Behrman was still ahead of him. So that's quite a big one. We need Behrman to, uh, you know, uh, respond a bit more. But Piastri wins it. So it's a big dent for Alonso. That's a setback for him. Constructors wise, we still gain the most points out of Mercedes Ferrari chasing us down. RB with one point. Aston and Williams outscored them. So it's a very competitive field, you must say. In 2026, every team's off the mark. Audi and Red Bull Ford locked into a battle. One point apiece. Williams and Aston chasing down maybe RB who are flagging a little bit and uh, we're trying our best to keep ahead of Mercedes and Ferrari and Antonelli grows to 88. I think both our drivers now. Yeah, both of them are 88 rated. God damn. God damn that they we might have two 90 rated drivers very soon that would be and, 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 and the, well one of them one of them is homegrown one of them we've grown the entire way Kimi he came to us quite high rated like he did bits and Mercedes whilst he was alongside Verstappen I think he I don't know if it's a mechanic at all but I feel like his growth was accelerated by being alongside Verstappen like, I don't know if there's anything in the coding underneath that where they learn from their teammates but I would like to think there's something like that because it would make sense in real life, of course. Alex Chan and Matthew Ogle are two engineers. Their contracts are ending. Honestly, might be an area where we look to upgrade potentially. I mean, there's good affinity between Matthew Ogle and Behrman. It's okay with Alex Chan and Antonelli's the one doing better. So just showing the affinity level may not mean too much. And maybe we should look to upgrade these guys because there definitely will be better race wrestling engineers on the market. They've been great for us, don't get me wrong, but... Maybe it's time to have a look around. Maybe we should actually scout that now. Let's have a little gander here. We've got quite a few people maybe open to negotiation, you know. I think everyone is seeing what we're doing and they would be happy to maybe try and entertain us to come towards us. Here in the game, unlike in real life, Bono, Bono went to Ferrari with Lewis. I didn't even know that. Bono went to Ferrari, mad. We've got GP, G Max's current race engineer. He's an Alpine. He's an Alpine. Alpine are only on eight points. I think we should go for GP. I think that would be a great coup and surely be looking to move on further up the grid from Alpine to us, I would hope. I'm going to scout GP and I'm also going to scout William Joseph, who's uh, Lando's current engineer. I really like William. He's a good, he seems like a good lad. So let's scout him and he's 88 rated. That will still be a significant upgrade, but GP would be a massive upgrade for us. Um, and he's at Alpine, unlike the others who are actually at good teams. Maybe Red Bull. Red Bull might be open to, to, to having their engineers nicked as well, to be fair. Right, we need to do some inventory on some parts because I've just had to change quite a few. So let's just check. Chassis is okay right now. Front wing, we absolutely need a couple of those. Get two of those going. Rear wing, yeah, two of those, absolutely need those. All right, we're going to Austria. The race targets are actually quite a lot lower than they were in the Dutch Grand Prix. So does that mean we may not be predicted to do very well around Austria, I wonder? Car performance still seems there, but we'll see how the, uh, how the, how the weekend unfolds. And off the back of that Dutch Grand Prix, Behrman has a fault with his second gearbox. That's two of them really worn out. That's not ideal. Really not ideal. Oh, go on. Go on, Antonelli. Pole position. Pole position. So much for lower. 
Lower race targets. Pole position. Bearman P4. Okay. What happened in that quali, though? What happened in that quali? We've... So, okay. We've sandwiched the two McLarens. Ocon is looking oh, is looking better again for RB, unfortunately for us. The two Ferraris are looking slower than the RB and the Mercedes. That's interesting. Not too far away from Williams. And Red Bulls. Stoffel van Dorn to a Red Bull on the up, maybe. Uh, very intriguing, but I was not expecting a pole position, especially with the race targets lowering. That is very intriguing. And Antonelli two tenths ahead of Alonso, who is ahead of Piastri, crucially for his championship fight. Okay, okay. Oh, oh, this is usually a good sign. This is maybe a good sign. He's celebrating on top of the car. Oh, I thought that animation could have meant and uh, nodded to a race win. But Behrman, back on the podium. We, we told him he had to respond, and he has, but Antonelli has bottled it from pole position. He's down to P10. So he must have had some sort of issue. I don't know. I don't know what's happened there, but Antonelli, P1 to P10. Not great. Alonso, P1. Piastri down to P5. That's big. That's a good big haul of points for Alonso to get for his championship chase. Pierre Gassi does very well in the Aston Martin. Sonoda in the Alpine. The two Williams as well. Another chaotic race. There's been some absolute bangers in these simulated races and, in, and the ones we're managing as well uh, in the season. So Behrman gets back ahead of Antonelli. So, you know, the dynamic is still there. They're pushing each other and it's working well. But look at this. Alonso, I think he's as close as he ever has been to Piastri. That looks a lot more doable for Fernando Alonso. I think it's game on in the championship for those two. Constructors-wise, McLaren outscore us, but we outscore Merck. Ferrari don't even score. I didn't even realize that. <laughs> Leclerc, P16. Hamilton, P20. Oh, my Lord. And <laughs> Ocon. That's Ocon. He's out. He's out. He was out in that race. Amazing stuff. Two for RB, naught for Ferrari, 12 for Merck, 20 for us. I mean, Aston outscored all three of these teams. Uh, Williams got 10 points, so they are outscored Ferrari and RB. So, um, yeah, that's huge. That's huge. That gives us a lot of breathing room. Team Hub is done, which is uh, very nice because, uh, you know, it's going to boost morale even more, hopefully, as we go into the British Grand Prix, the first race we will be managing in this episode. Our two engineers are scouted. We'll have a look at them next episode to maybe sign. Regulation vote for sporting rules this is for next season. So this will be about the engine limit. And this is actually going about limiting the engine from four to three. I do not want that. I think it's already too restrictive. I'm voting against that change. I don't want that to happen. Right, here we go. The British Grand Prix. We come to our home race for the first time as race winners. Can we go out there and make a name for ourselves? Well, we will see. We will see. A little bit of traffic for both drivers and uh, Behrman severely held up. Severely held up. We'll have to go again. That's a bit frustrating. But uh, it happens in Q1. It happens in Q1. Verstappen right now, quickest of all, but others will be coming through. Let's see. Piastri also with a lap that clearly was impeded by traffic there. So right now, Verstappen's still top. Right, both going out again on another set of soft tyres. Hopefully this time they get a better run, but... There's equally just as much traffic here as Behrman is trying to navigate it. He's got through a couple of cars. Verstappen's still top of the session. Gasly goes second place in the Aston Martin. Sonoda in third. Where are the McLarens? Alonso 11, Piastri 16. The two Ferraris were in the drop zone. Leclerc gets out. So it is a hectic one here around Silverstone. It's only a green and yellow sector for Behrman crosses the line purple in the last sector p11 only though definitely a bit more pace in the car though that purple is quite exciting to see because he again clearly got held up in the second sector Antonelli doesn't improve on his lap he stays p4 but Silverstone or at least on the game is really turned into a traffic fest very hard to find that room to go and get your lap in uh, I hope... We're, oh, no. Wait, hang on a minute. Be we have to go again with Behrman. We have to go again. Can you get ready? Go, go, go. You have to go again, man. I can't believe I have to put Behrman out for a third time in Q1. I thought we were over having to really work hard in Q1 to get into Q2. And Behrman, will he get to the line? I think he will. He'll start his lap. Hopefully going to be a good one with clean air. The Hulkenberg will gain on him. Get out of the way, man. No, Nico! Hulkenberg! He held us up there. 
That's a yellow middle sector. Oh, no. I mean, right now, it's an absolute howler for Ferrari. Both Ferraris are out. We're out. Behrman's out. Behrman. Both Ferraris are out. Lewis Hamilton is out. We're out. Oh, what the... What a horrendous qualifying in our home race. Of course, of course. It just can't go our way at the home Grand Prix. Ah, oh, man. What a chaotic qualifying, though. We're out. Both Ferraris are out. Sainz is out whilst uh, Verstappen's up there in P3. Mental. Mental. The traffic was ridiculous around Silverstone. It was so bad. Right, going out with Antonelli. I didn't go straight away because I thought he might get held up. So I've tried to maybe see if we can slot him into a bit of clean air, but he's going to catch Mick Schumacher. Hopefully Mick does not hold us up. Let's see. Get out of the way. That's good. That's good for us. I think that other car got out of the way as well, a Bottas. So let's see what this will be. Antonelli feeling confident. Purple and green crossing the line. That's looking a bit better. Although Lando looking very good in that Williams, only two tenths off us. Let's see what the McLarens can do and what Verstappen can do because he was looking very good in Q1. But Verstappen's now held up for traffic. So, you know, other, other drivers are now having their turn at feeling the pain of the traffic. And Antonelli, P1 right now in Q2 to get into the top 10 shootout with probably not another run. I think we should be fine. Hulkenberg, again, doing bits for Audi. Maybe could pull them into the top 10. Both RBs in the drop zone, which is lovely. Alonso's in the drop zone. He needs a good lap here. He needs to get through into the next part of qualifying to keep up the pressure on Oscar Piastri. Alonso... He's going to come through. Let's see. He's out right now. He's P15. Comes across the line. Fernando Alonso goes top. That's a statement and a half. Four tenths ahead of Antonelli. Big statement for him. Hulkenberg. Let's see what he can do on his final lap. Can he get through? Oh, he does. Nico Hulkenberg climbs the Audi up into the top 10. But Bottas, could he come through? No. Bottas does not go through. Ocon. Wow. Ocon has come back with a strong lap there for RB. But Hulkenberg's through for Audi. And Verstappen's out. Both Mercs are out. Wow. Silverstone's thrown up a real hectic quality. We've got two Astins, a Williams, RB, a one Red Bull, one Red Bull as well, one Audi, an Alpine as well, both McLarens. The McLaren are the only team that got two of their cars in. Uh, and Aston, sorry, and Aston. So, yeah, very chaotic. Okay. Antonelli versus Alonso and Piastri for the pole. Right, setting Ant Antonelli out straight away. This is on a scrub set of tyres, so it's not going to be the quickest tyre ever going. But just in case, there is a little bit of traffic here which is always the case on the first laps. You know, people are going out as well. There's always a bit of an awkward overlap there. So Antony has to do quite a lot of overtaking. So just hoping that maybe the next lap, because it's a newer tyre, is guaranteed to be better. And also that's added in with less traffic. But let's see how it goes right now. 1.6 ahead of Lando, which is very good. Uh, very close to Gasly in their uh, award, I should say. Alonso. Hot, nearly a second quicker, so definitely a bit of time to find because Ocon's even better than us in the RB. So, may, I don't know. I, but obviously, you saw the R&D chart at the start of the episode. Maybe RB have really come back with the R&D lately since the start of the episode. I don't know. Right, we're going out with Antonelli. We just got ahead of Mick Schumacher, Sonoda, and Hulkenberg. And we're leading probably the last pack that is going to be across the line. Look at all the clean air for Antonelli. Green first sector. Green second sector. Will there be a cheeky purple at the end to maybe get us through? It's definitely going to be a better lap, but how good will it be? Right now, Piastri is on provisional pole position. Alonso, P2. Gasly, third. Ocon, fourth. Antonelli comes through to the line. Come on, mate. Come on. Crosses the line. Antonelli goes P2 on the front row. Not enough for pole position, but it is quicker than a McLaren. That is pretty damn good. That sets us up for the possibility of a decent race tomorrow for the full race. Antonelli on the front row delivering whilst Behrman was out in Q1, unfortunately. Ocon, P5, showing RB have improved once again to be looking a bit better than they have been in the last few races Gasly's up there. That's a bit of a surprise for Aston. Oh, to be honest, Red Bull and Mick Schumacher up here. That's a surprise. 
And uh, Sonoda and Hulkenberg just doing bits for their respective teams. Very, very good stuff. All right, strategy-wise, it's uh, it's an abrasive circuit, Silverstone, soft tyres all used, uh, mediums as well. We've got new tyres for both drivers. So I'm trying to think with Behrman, definitely, I think, go aggressive at the start. Soft to medium to soft. I like that. I actually like that look for him to go aggressive. With Antonelli, do we try something different to just go a bit different to the uh to the mclarens maybe start on a medium i'm not saying do the one stop here but go to medium then go soft and see what we can do later on lower fuel on soft tires like how about we do this and then if we feel like we we need to bail onto a soft let's bail onto a soft well it's great to have you with us folks as we settle in for the weekend's grand prix action well they certainly appear calm and composed heading into this race it's a P2 start for them, an excellent opportunity, and no doubt they'll be looking to grab it with both hands. And the time has come. Let's go racing. Hold on tight. It's the British Grand Prix. Here we go, important one, front row for Antonelli, off the line from P2, there's already some sort of car issue, unfortunately, I can see on his tab, and the McLaren of Alonso going round the outside, no, the McLaren's very quick, too quick for us, maybe today already, off the bat, Ocon down to P5, uh, uh, as Gasly climbs to P4, potentially, uh, they're still swapping positions behind this, Gasly absolutely on us. That Aston, rapid at the start here. He's on softs, though. We're on mediums. And Alonso's also medium. So me and Alonso on the same strategy, but the McLaren looks my, uh, a little bit better today. Let's see what we can do with the strategy. Meanwhile, for Behrman, he's up to P16. So, what, one position gain? Maybe not even that. I don't know. <laughs> What's this issue for Antonelli? Oh, oh gear... What the... High gearbox, overheating curbs condition where's that come from he did not have this problem qualifying that just randomly happened to us oh dearie me that is not good that is not good all right gonna calm this down go avoid high risk curbs get these temperatures down just a little bit there i fear that antonelli is actually getting pressurized by the aston Forget the forget the McLarens. We're being pressurized by an Aston Martin of Pierre Gasly as Behrman is making moves, getting up to P15 now. Good move around the outside of the Alpine. I think we're going to be having some fun today with Behrman, but Antonelli, uh, yeah, feeling the pressure maybe from that Aston behind. And Ocon, not too far. Not too far from it all. Schumacher with the car issue, but holding on into the top 10. Hulkenberg holding on in the top 10 for Audi. Well, Antonelli's now thankfully pulling away from Gasly. You can see that on the minimap as Behrman gets uh, Magnussen. Oh, his battery's empty a little bit. Let's go to neutral. But yeah, Antonelli, you can see there's a bit of a gap there. One second, so he's broken DRS. So he's now in no man's land um, on his own, really, as Behrman gets Van Dorn. All the overtakes for, for Oli Behrman here. Catching up in absolutely mincing the Red Bull forward in a straight line up to uh, P13. That's good progress for Behrman. Very good progress. Alonso. Oh, Alonso's locked up. Alonso's locked up. He was first place. He was in the lead. He had got Piastri. Piastri facing tyre wear, but Alonso faces the pressure of leading and he's down, not even to P2. He's down to 11th place. Behrman is now fighting Alonso. So after all of this, we're actually respectively trying to fight a McLaren. Antonelli on Piastri and Behrman on Alonso. Go on, Behrman. Go on. You know you want to get him. Yes, come on. Victory. Mini victory. We've overtaken a McLaren on track. P11 at the British Grand Prix. The crowd is going wild for that. Come on. Antonelli, meanwhile, looking good. No man's land, but... We are protecting the tyres. Sonoda is running P3 of the moment in the Alpine. That's mental. What a race Sonoda is having in the Alpine. Gasly as well, to be fair. Ocon still P5. Schumacher, oh, war. Verstappen in a train here with Lando tailing. And Behrman is pulling slightly away from Alonso, which is good. Surely that lockup cooked his tyres. Yeah, Alonso's got very bad tyres, so he's going to be really on the back foot. 
this is an open goal for Piastri to really get back a bit of a lead in the championship unless we can do something about that. Behrman gets George Russell in the Haas. That is one more position. I think that's him into now the points paying position. So Behrman in the first stint alone has come back into the points and look at all this fighting going on. Oi, oi, oi. Behrman probably rubbing his hands in the cockpit, ready to get stuck into this all. Oh, oh no. Oh no. Mechanical issue. Mechanical fault. That gearbox has now got a fault. Temporary fault. Driving clean air. What's the fault, though? What's the fault? I didn't hear what the fault was. I think whatever the fault is. Oh, acceleration. Okay. We're going to be slower because of this. That's not good. That's annoying. That's really frustrating. That's just gifting Piastri this. And now all of a sudden, Ocon is up to third place. Of course he is. Of course. Of course. You, there's no way we're letting this man close up to us and get P2. Uh-uh. Not happening, not happening. Meanwhile, Behrman, his, uh, his um, progress has stalled a little bit. P11 behind Mick Schumacher. He's got Alonso for company right behind him. We need to get a move on. We need to get a move on here. Behrman, use a bit of deploy, mate. Come on, let's get him, let's get him. Let's go. Good. Push away, push away now, mate. Right, Piastri pits. Piastri pits. He's on to medium, so he's definitely doing a two-stop then. We're, we're now, because we've got this gearbox issue, I think we should definitely try a one-stop just to see if we can do anything on defense because this is going to hurt us. It has hurt us already in terms of pace. Behrman, I'm going to go off, avoid high-risk curves, going to go full attack here. And I think I may pit him very soon as he makes a move on the outside of the Mercedes. No, not quite. Push hard, Behrman. Go on, go on. Go on, Behrman, go on. Right, Behrman's going to be... Oh, no, he's not pit yet. Oh, no. I called it too late. I called it too late. Oh, Behrman, down the inside. It's a 1-2 for our team. He's gone a lot longer than I wanted him to. He's gone two laps longer than maybe we should have. But it has meant we've held up Piastri a bit, you know? Piastri's been held up by his own teammate, Anno Ward and Behrman, which is good for him. Which is good for Antonelli, I should say. And Behrman is in. Let's go top up. Go low fuel, and he is in for mediums. And uh, Alonso continues on then, on those mediums of his. Antonelli just doing his thing in the league. Behrman's come out P7, which is decent, actually. He's managed to basically jump some people in all of that. Like, we're ahead of Sonoda. Well, Sonoda is running pretty damn high at one point, so it's looking very good for him. Very good for Hamilton, although I don't think Hamilton's pit yet. No, probably not pit. So once these guys pit, I think Behrman could actually get up to P5. That would be really, that's really, really solid. Hit window open. Piastri's gaining on us. As soon as he gets towards DRS, we need to go always defend. Hang on. Always defend. And then take you off high risk curbs. Let's start pushing for a little bit. See what the pace is like. Let's see now. Pushing. Can we stay ahead of Ant uh, Can we stay ahead of Piastri? And also, no, we can't stay ahead of Piastri. Great. Awesome. He's already overtaken us. Right. And Antonelli, we come in now. Harvest, come in for the hards. Right, meanwhile, Behrman, where is he at? Where is he at? P5, like I said, he's up to P5. Very, very good stuff there for Behrman. Of course, Behrman does not have a broken car. So Behrman's actually come out. Basically, Antonelli's come out behind Behrman. But obviously, Behrman with one more stop to go. But Behrman doesn't have a car issue. This car issue must be really... It says minor, but it must be hurting us a fair amount. Right, so Piastri's P1. Behrman's P2 right now. And I'm using the space he's got, as you can see, just to save fuel, basically, at this point. Lando P3, Gasly, Antonelli just got overtaken by Alonso as uh, in the S section. In Magnus and Beckett's. Just showing maybe Antonelli's really struggling with that gearbox fault. Alonso coming back through. He's on hard, so he might be trying a one-stop as well, Alonso. Uh, but yeah, that, that minor fault, it, there's just no way to fix it. You know, it's just there, basically. Yeah, Alonso's flying. Alonso's got P4. Yeah, that, that gearbox issue is GG's. It's GG's. It's over. It's over for Antonelli. I don't think he'll be doing too well in this race. Behrman actually probably will finish better than him because just his car's not broken. I'm going to start pushing with Behrman because he's within the pit window. But he's got a lot of tire, le tire wear left, so let's really push it. Behrman's in. Same lap as Piastri. Comes out. Okay. So Antonelli's back to second place, but you can see he has been so slow with the gearbox issue that Piastri's pit and come out 10 seconds ahead of him. So it's GG's. And Behrman's selling fast after Grand Prix and gaining on him. So... Yeah, that's really showing how much the car issue is hampering uh, Kimi. And Behrman's been flying, doing really well. Antonelli down to fifth place. The pace has been absolutely shocking. Alonso's passed. Lando's passed in the Williams. 
Oh, this gearbox problem, man. Really, really frustrating gearbox problem. To be fair, look at the whole grid. Real big problems for everyone. Sonoda's got a problem. O'Ward, Ocon, Sainz, Magnussen, Van Dorn, Lawson, Mick Schumacher, and uh, one of the Audis there, I think, of uh, Villa Gomez, maybe. Behrman, 10 seconds. To be fair, Behrman's brought the gap down from what was, I think, about 15 seconds to 10 seconds. So he's had some decent, really decent pace here, but... The 10 seconds here is really the time he lost having to climb up from P17. So in reality, maybe we did have a car to fight today, but Ant Antonelli early on with that gearbox issue, just you know, we had no chance. And Behrman obviously was already out of the fight being down there in uh, where, wherever he was. Behrman brings home a solid, solid podium on home soil. Home race second place. We'll have to take it. Still going to be happy about that, you know. Before the race win, we would have been out, out stat. We would have been so happy with second place. Really That's all the stone. So, so much fun. Good also. stuff. Good stuff, Behrman. Thanks, everyone. He had a lot of fun. I'm sure he did because he had so he did some brilliant overtaking out there. Really did. Really did. Antonelli limps home in P5 with the car fault. It is what it is, mate. It is what it is. At least we got P5 with the car issue. And we ran out of fuel on the line. Amazing. Well, well managed that. Good job. You know, made the best of it. Made the best of it. You know, as a team overall, I mean, Ollie, look at that. 15 places gained. What a drive for him. As a team, we gained 28 points. So, you know, even though it doesn't feel like a great race that really, it actually was amazing. You know, how many points we got there over Merck, over Ferrari, over RB, over Aston. You know, so many, so many. So that's a really solid one. And Behrman, having been overtaken by Antonelli, and I said something about it at the start of the episode, look at him now. He's clapped back two podiums in a row. Really has come back with a consistency there. Really good stuff. And oh, really? Oh, come on, man. The teams have voted for the change. So we're going to have one less engine next season. So it's going to be even more difficult to manage the already difficult nature of the engine wear. Outstanding. Love that. I hate you all. Hospitality has been upgraded. Good stuff. We've, we've still got facilities uh, upgrades coming through, is it? Oh, that, I think that's the last one. That's the last one. And the research on suspension will be done in two days' time, which means I think I'm comfy to be fair we could probably get get one going right now let's do a car design well we, we're still weak on high speed aren't we that's our biggest weakness that's our biggest weakness so let's go for another underfloor oh no we can't we're researching that god damn it i don't think we've actually done a new front wing this season so maybe this is overdue and we've got our mid-season board review 69 for uh, abby pulling rating wise and now our mid-season review we're on target aren't we we're very much on target the board loves me that you guys, you love me. 1.5 million. Thank you very much. What's it going to be? What's it going to be? Oh, that's surprising. Behrman with the pole position. He really is going from strength to strength this episode. Two back-to-back -back podiums. And he's now got pole for Hungary. I like that. You know what? That's a good response to the criticism we gave him at the start of the episode. That's good. Anthony P5. It's okay. Don't know what happened. Maybe a bit of traffic easily. Could have just been some traffic there. Uh, the overall grid, Piastri, Alonso, Verstappen's up there. Lando, again, doing well in the Williams. RB, P10, but a penalty. So they'll be further down than, than, than that. Uh, uh, maybe but to round out the episode four races in this one mega episode in terms of the progression of the season it's a it's a solid result of course as you would expect now but what kind of solid result is it going to be it's going to be nearly double podium actually genuinely nearly a double podium Behrman was less than a second away from Alonso uh, but we were 31 seconds away from Piastri. Piastri dominated that one. Second and fourth place, though. That's solid. You know, checkerboard with McLaren. We can't complain. We can't complain about that. Uh, Verstappen P5. The Ferraris went a lot better here. Lando secured one or uh, two points for, for Williams. Russell secured one point for Haas, which is pretty good for them. We're now third and fourth in the Drivers' Championship. It's once again scoring more points than Merck Ferrari. So honestly, I mentioned it before about putting research parts into next year's car. Guys, actually now, hopefully for those of you still watching at this point, let me know. Definitely let me know in the comments. Do you think now... Now, should I, seeing this, start to really put stuff into next year's car in order to try and bridge that gap to McLaren? Because even though technically it seems on paper we're there, we're just not. We're actually just not. 
and the high speed's a massive problem. So maybe we need to just put in research to solve that for next season. It could be quite an exciting one next episode because I think I'm going to go ahead and look at signing some new race engineers uh, to start with us for next season um, as we get some last research bits done. And Behrman grows to 89. We love that. We love to see that and our sponsor plan has been achieved thank you very much the full three million added on we're cooking with the finances man 36 million really financing not a problem this season we've been very diligent in our spending that that crossover from quantity to quality upgrades that we made in season two has really proved to be the better route for us now as uh, you know as a team of where we sit but guys that's been a great big episode of f1 manager 24 guys hit the like button let me know what you thought in the comments below and you're around here then do get subscribed for weekly formal on content i will catch you guys around goodbye